Hello everybody, this is your host, the one and only Mr. LP, Steven Sykes, host of Enlivering Radio, part of LegacyInternetRadio.com and also with Travala Studios. And I have a wonderful couple here that's going to help explain the importance of life, love, businesses, relationships, and a whole lot more. One of the things out there in the world is that we lack the ability to communicate or actually we have the ability, but we lack the willingness and the understanding of the things that you have to do step by step before you go into love business and on so many other different things and I have the wonderful Garrett family. How y'all doing? How you doing? Hello. How you doing? Hello. You doing all right. So tell everybody your names and stuff for yourselves. I am Lester Garrett. And I am his lovely wife, Monique Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> yes, how are you doing today? We're doing great. How are you? I'm doing all right. Well first of all, welcome to Richmond, Virginia. Thank you. Thank and you. things and we're still in the Commonwealth, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we do what we can and so forth. So, before we go into all of this, uh, you know, for inquiring minds that don't know, you know, the rest of the, you know, only the six billion people know, but the rest of the few billion <laughs> that don't know. Uh, now, I'm going to start with him because I know you. <laughs> sir. So, how did you meet this lovely lady? And then, second of all, I would, the, real, the other question I really want to ask is, how did you get her to say yes? Because she don't, know what, <laughs> she don't agree to nothing. Okay. <laughs> Well, first of all, I'm glad you started with me because mm -hmm. this, this is the, the, the facts. And, um, we have a fact checker. Fact checker. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was, it was about maybe seven years ago, ish, eight years ago. Uh, I was at a, a business meeting, and I saw this young lady come through the door. I said, "Okay, not bad, not bad looking, you know." But I'm about business, <laughs> so I stayed focused. You know, I had a task at hand. I had an interview. I actually ended up doing a presentation for. Her a few hundred people and so but afterwards I realized she had she wanted my card so <laughs> well, was that the game was that the trick no I'm a well, networker well, so well, I get people's well, cards okay, okay. Uh, uh, so yeah. but but she <laughs> so yes I card. think it is okay. <laughs> that fact. fact is true fact. so um, we exchanged cards but you know we started just communicating on a business level we became friends and the rest is history <laughs> because you know my personality, you know, we had a lot of common um, goals. Mm -hmm. It was pretty easy for the transition. So we, again, we were friends first, but then we became lovers. Okay, not a problem. So now, what's your what's your <laughs> what's your side of the story? Well, he told the truth for the most part. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was a um, business meeting that my mom sent me to reluctantly, mm -hmm. and um, I remember walking in and I saw this guy as I was walking down the hallway lean on this table and he mm -hmm. turned he made eye contact with me and he made like he looked at me like like he said like man who is that and i said that is a nice blazer that he has on i'm so honest so and your head was like yeah i look good <laughs> yeah, so yeah, well, I, wouldn't even, I was like you know whatever uh -huh. but that's a nice, <laughs> okay, okay, i was like that is a nice blazer that he has on because we're both really into like men's fashion and so mm -hmm. Um, yes, we did become, I did get his car, mm -hmm. um, because I'm about networking and getting someone to help me, especially when it comes to business, and, you know, he was just on his game with business, and so we, you know, I reached out to him for help, he did help me do my very first presentation, so even from when we were just friends, like, Lester has always kind of been there for me and been there to help me and be very, very supportive. So we just grew from being friends, and it was funny because I always joke, I tried to hook him up with one of my girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, and my oh girlfriend boy. was like, yeah, yeah. I don't like it. He don't yeah. like me. Yeah. He likes you. And I was like, likes me. And so, like he said, the rest is history. So, so how was that like? Did you just you get one step to the next? Were you working the game, or what was the... Well, to see whoever no, that was, It was interesting because you know, I, I was kind of, I almost hurt by it. I mean, she's going to pawn me off on somebody else. <laughs> so you put him in the friend zone already. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I didn't think that he was my friend. I thought he was like a really great guy. He was a nice guy. And I was like, and she's a great girl. Yeah, she's actually yeah. getting married, yeah. you know, in, in December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so obviously it was not meant to be, but I... <laughs> That says a lot that I would hook yeah. him up with one of my girlfriends. Yeah. So, in other words, so there is truth that you could turn a, a person from a friend zone to a relationship. I think there's truth, but I think there are certain conditions. You know, like Mary J. Blige has that song, um, uh -oh. How Did Two of Us, We Were 
friends and now my friend became my lover or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think for us, it was a gradual progression. Like we both went to, through some things and um, dynamics yeah, in our personal lives. Mm -hmm. And um, we were supportive and we were friends. Like I knew his character. Yeah. So when we decided to date, I made some things very clear. Um, first of all, I have three kids, three, three younger kids. So I was not about to be a career girlfriend. Gotcha. My kids were used to seeing a mom and a dad. Um, and, but I made that very clear from the beginning. I, we didn't start dating yeah. each other, and I was yeah. like, oh, well, when we get married, and I got kids, and I want a husband, I had to kind of know where he was. I had to know who he was as a person. Did So let me ask you, this inspires a bunch of questions. Uh, did you date to uh, for a purpose of marriage, or you just date just to have fun? And then you, as you got to know him, it started saying, you know, he could be potential. I didn't date for the purpose of marriage. I really wasn't even trying to date. It's just that we were involved. It was just me. You were just hanging out and ended up being like, well, you know. We were just, yeah. we were spent a lot of time yeah, around each other yeah. as far as our business. And then it grew into a friendship. And I was like, wait a minute, I think I might like him. You know, so I, I don't think you should ever date for looking for marriage. I think there are women, and, I, and we have a lot of friends that are older, that when they get involved in a relationship, the mindset is, yes, I would like to make this something long-term, eventually leading to marriage, um, but I don't think you go into a relationship like, I'm trying to find a husband, because that's when a lot of women get messed up. Exactly. Yeah. Sir, so what, what was your, when you started going through her, what was your mindset, okay, you know, you being your natural self, sure. you being a kind, peaceful man, uh, what what was your mindset in terms of getting to us? And I'm sure she would agree. You know, one of the things that stuck out to me about um, Monique is the way she handled her kids. That was that that struck me so. I said, wow, this young lady, she's a business-minded woman. She's a hard-working woman, but she still puts her kids first. Okay. Okay. And that see, gets me in trouble. But, but see, well, okay, but see, one of the things I've always said, you know, um, unfortunately, there are a lot of single mothers out there. Sure. And so when going out there, my whole thing, when I tell a lot of guys is, you know, first you're dating, you're not just dating a mother, you got the whole family. Even though if you don't meet the kids for a long time, mm -hmm. you're still dating the family. That's right. Package, yeah. Exactly. And the second thing is, how is she treating as a mother? That's right. If she's not disciplined on education, yes. this, that, and then if you're trying to yeah. offer some additional things on it yeah. and she ain't receptive, that's she's not ready. Yes. Mm -hmm. And thing now, understanding how she is, yeah. she's not gonna let that stuff go yeah. no. and everything yeah. else. And yeah. so I, uh, I already know you're the disciplinarian. Yes. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm the Okay. I, 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 I'd like to think I'm tough on our kids in terms of mm -hmm. academics. Um, I do a lot of, I talk, mm -hmm. I'll back it up, but. <laughs> but I guess he, he, we're both disciplinarians. I think there are times where he's, we're a good balance because where I'm weak and soft in some areas, he's stronger he's not too hard but then where there's some areas where he may be a little too rough mm -hmm. i can come in and smooth out the rough edges so uh, we're a good balance and that's important in a relationship very much so um i know. want to i want to add to that too and that, that brings up the challenges of being a blended family yes. mm -hmm. because me stepping in at the stage where they are you know I don't know, four or six or whatever. So they already have some of the bit of yeah. a personality in it. So I had, to, I had to, you know, I'm coming, I'm the new guy. So I had to step back and observe. I had to gain their trust first. Mm -hmm. So being a disciplinary like I really wanted to be in the beginning, I couldn't do that. Because again, I have a son that's 30 now, and I raised him, and he knew who I was from, from birth. But, you know, my new family, I had to make sure I knew where I fit in first. Mm -hmm. Then gain it, trust, but it would be fine. What was your non and going into this? And I'm going to ask him for for a reason. Mm -hmm. What was your non-negotiables? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's a, a good, good one. Question. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, one smoking. I was smoking. I wanted an honest woman, which I knew, and I wanted a Christian woman, which she was. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a Christian woman, which she was. Um, so that that was some of my key things, and again. Going back to the kids, that was not negotiable to me because I had raised a son and I wanted a mother who I knew took care of her kids. You know, despite everything else that's going on, I wanted to make sure I had a mother that would take care of her kids. Cause I, I, in fact, I just so happened, I was, because my son had grown and moved out of the house, I was looking into potentially adopting some kids. Mm -hmm. But maybe one, just one. <laughs> 
But when I met, you got a package deal. And I got three. So already, already, already yeah. ready made. Yeah. Yeah. Ready yeah. made. So what was your non-negotiables in going into this? Uh, again, I think someone, you know, obviously that was honest, yes. but I told him verbatim, something that's non-negotiable is church. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, I'm not going to make you go. I'm not going to give you an ultimatum. I'm just telling you where I am. And because I do have children, how I choose to raise my children. And mm -hmm. I said that from the onset. And I wasn't making him go to church with me because if that wasn't what he chose to do, that was fine. But you knew from the beginning and from you know, the aunt said that that's what I wanted, non-negotiable. I also wanted someone that would spend time with me, like that we could have quality time. I wanted someone that would allow me to be myself. You know, we both were married before. And one of the things that I felt like, and I've talked to a lot of women who were married or are whatever, and it's not so much that it's your spouse's fault, but at a certain point as a woman, you can begin to lose yourself mm -hmm. because you're having yes. to be the wife, you're having to be the mother, you're yeah, having to be the career yeah, woman, exactly. the, the, the girlfriend, the daughter, the whatever. Um, you can begin to lose yourself. And I remember sitting up one day when I turned 32 and saying, I don't know who I am. So what I used to always say to him, he felt like home. There were a lot of things about him that reminded me of my things that my dad would do. My dad would like, put his hand on my head and stroke my head and those were things that he would do so I always felt like he was a soft place to land and I always felt very comfortable so women do get a man that reminds them of their father something <laughs> <laughs> so like, my dad is a character oh, if anyone good. sees this like <laughs> anyone knows my dad they know oh, yeah. but you know I there are things when you've had a good relationship with your father and, and that's why with you know He's we have a daughter right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah with our daughter it's so important for little girls to have good relationships oh, gosh, with men so especially cool. Especially whether it's an, an uncle, because he's, you know, been very active in his niece and nephew's life. But, you know, my daughter had a father, so she was conscious. It wasn't like there was never one there. Um, where he was not able to be there now, he has stepped in and really filled that void. And that was very important because I had a good relationship with my dad. See, up. and you know, and you know how for a long time, and I've always said from 78 to about 02, we lost our men. And they and it was saying you know for a generation for those twenty years or so that it really affected the men. I honestly beg to differ. I really think it affected the women more yeah, so than anything yeah. else because now we have a, three, four generations now women. And before and reason why I say before because we had the military yeah. involved issue, but so many young women and they did not grow up with the father, did not have an image of what a man mm -hmm. supposed to be. They didn't have a standard. standard. Yeah. So then they said, hey baby, come here. Okay, I drop my pants. Mm -hmm. You know, and all these mm -hmm. other different things mm -hmm. that goes on. Or give me your money, or give me your car, give me your kids. Yeah. And then so now they have no understanding of what a rooted right. image of a man. So that's why I would say we have to pay attention whether you know, and involved in a relationship or not, because you don't know what who eyes are looking at. You. Right, so, right. You know, That's true. Thing. And then the fact that you and I are salute you because you're still involved in your uh, extended family within your son yes. and oh, yeah. other oh, yeah. family. And like, there's all these kids that don't have. Um, I see where their fathers uh, may not have, uh, they've been gone, but then the uncles and things, they're not around either. That's right. And I'm still like, that's this still your responsibility. Right. Mm -hmm. Just because your brother, older, younger may walked out, that's still your family. That's right. So you have some responsibility in that. Yeah, Absolutely. that's true. Because I had a good relationship with my dad as a child, my dad took me roller skating with bike ride. He was a single dad. My parents split when I was like a month old. But we would go, you know, bike riding, roller skating through Rock Creek Park. You know, he taught me how to walk down the street and I had to be cool because we lived in, you know, D.C. and <laughs> off of Georgia <laughs> Avenue. And my dad taught me how to pimp. But he, he, and I was an only child, so he spoiled me. So I had a certain standard. So, and I saw how my dad treated my mom. So I knew what I was going to accept and what I was not going to accept. So I was able to look and say, you know, well, this is not cool, but this is real cool over here. Exactly. So, and going forward uh, with all of this, and you, you know, coming from UVA and our background, stuff like that, we had to come up to a, we had to felt a certain standard that we had to uh, go up by. Mm -hmm. And you went on to law. Mm -hmm. With being that grounded, but that rooted in terms of toughness, mm -hmm. in terms of mental, and then you have with the kids, how did that come to the level of where you may feel like, okay, for, even from the first marriage into this one, the level of giving of yourself 
uh, or the, uh, another word people say submissive, another person may say, you know, sharing, whatever the case may be, the definition for you. Mm -hmm. How did that go from being that that solid foundation, mm -hmm. and especially coming from a parent mm -hmm. situation, to now transitioning to this for another man that's just as equal, mm -hmm. and if in some cases more or less ahead mm -hmm. of your business, mm -hmm. because he came to show you some things about presentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how did that come from now? I got to sit back and wait. How? What? What process was that for you? Well, I think he'll tell you. I don't sit back and wait. <laughs> no, no, uh, see, I, I do that, but I was just but, trying, no, see, I I was trying to help you here. No, no I understand your question. Yeah. Um, I, I was think, trying to be smooth about it, okay? I think for me, it was really when I had <clears throat> my daughter. Um, because what I think also is important is when you, my parents separated when I was a month old. Um, so my mom was a very independent, strong woman. You know, and then, you know, my dad helped me to be strong. Uh, so, but when I got into my first marriage, you talk about kind of bucking the system. I was like, no, we, this is what I want to do. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. Like, this well, is kind well, of my well, idea. We, but yeah. it really me. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm really smart. I'm really educated. Like, this is, hey, this is a good idea. Okay, well, you don't want to do it? Okay, well, I'll just let you know how, you know. But so then when I had my daughter, it really <laughs> softened me. And I was like, okay, I've got to take care really? of this person. Yeah, yeah. no, she, <laughs> she did to a certain extent. But when you are on your second marriage, okay, there were obviously some things you needed to learn because there's some things that didn't work in that first situation. And I, and you know, I was married for 11 years in my first marriage. So when I came out of that, I knew what I wanted and I knew, and I knew how I needed to be. I could see the changes, like he probably wouldn't like me if he had met, met me when I was 20 something years old. I was a different person and we've talked and he was a different person. But when you realize, like, okay, these are the things that I needed to work on, and if I want to continue to be married, I have to kind of be that way. So there are a lot of times I will bite my tongue because at the end of the day, he is the man, you know? So in transparency, what's <clears throat> one, we ain't going to list it all, mm -hmm. but what's one of the main thing that you had to work on? Um, I think a lot of, one of the things that, I always having to have a last word or having to say something or every time something happens like having to comment or nitpick about everything there's sometimes I'm just like okay Lord just help me keep my mouth shut because is it really worth it yeah. is it really worth it? and he taught me that yeah. because I would be like oh we're in an argument I'm not speaking to you for the next 24 hours and he would come around and want to talk and I was like wait a minute why are you talking to me like I'm still mad and he was kind of is it really worth it because you can't it's it, it, you pick and choose in your battles. You pick and choose and, your battles. And, and it's like, where is, where is, okay, I will not speak for 24 hours, okay? Then you're losing everything else. Exactly. Right? It's like, I, I'm the person that's like, okay, you're mad, let's talk about it. Now, I know some people need a minute. You yeah. get that yeah. Yeah. But like, I ain't talking to you for a week or two, and then it's like a month later, you did this two yeah. months yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> is it really worth it? But that it? was the immature stuff I used to do yeah. in my last marriage, because I grew up doing that in relationships. I didn't have an example of two parents in the household that may disagree that, you know, you still see them hug and kiss. And we have minor disagreements yeah. in front of our kids, but then we just move on. Move on. Because time waits for, <clears throat> waits for no one. Oh, gosh. You know, waits for no one. So, so sir, what did you have to do for yourself to change and from the previous <coughs> relationship to then now? The stuff you can say on camera. <laughs> 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 it's live and radio, we yeah. tell the truth. <laughs> I'm just going to keep that in mind and stuff like that. What I had to change? I had to make sure I, I, I kept my wife number one, you know, above all other women, period, including moms. She's my number one. I had to learn that. And because I struggled with that in my first marriage, I really did, you know, my wife was first, you know, what about my mom? But, you know, she's the one who's going to spend the rest of my life with. So my, I had to make sure, when I let her know, if we ever separate, it's going to be because of her. Mm -hmm. I've always said that. It's not going to be because of me, it's going to be because of you. So that way, that way, that takes the pressure off. Lester is on you now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a safety check. Yeah. What was, uh, how are you in recognizing that, you know, you have to put her first. Yes. What other things as you as a man, because you're a different man sure. and things, because I know you to be a very peaceful, humble, and a very uh, kind of just giving sure. and just like, okay, let's just yeah. move on yeah. and things of what they, nature. Were you always like that, or did was there a challenge? I think for the most part, I have been like that. For the most part, 
I'm about to get people in trouble here. (laughs) But I will say, you know, I think having that Christian base now, you know, working on relationship with the Lord has really, really changed me. That's what's really changed me above everything else because without him, I I was, like I said, being that man. I was all over the place. Wasn't really grounded in a lot of areas. But going back for a second, I think I always told her, her kids really changed my outlook too because coming to the relationship, I realized her kids were, you know, quoting Bible scriptures. I was like, oh, these kids know some stuff. And then she was um, saying a lot of Bible scriptures. So I said, for me, if I'm going to leave this household, I got to get myself together. <laughs> but you're like, you the sound uh, the stereotypical. Sure. Like, when you're the man, you come in, I'm first, what I say, law, is yeah. that you ain't the only one, but yeah. it's all about me. Well, how did that change? Well, you know, it, <laughs> that, that's a good question because prior to our relationship, being a single man and really just having the freedom to just roam and do whatever I wanted to do, that was kind of somewhat humbling for me and then a challenge at first saying, you know, now I have potential help three little kids, a new wife, a potential wife, I had a, the mother-in-law, the grandmother, grandmother her dad, grandma. so it was, a, it, was a, it was a huge adjustment to me. You know, you, going back to one of your other questions about a deal breaker, that was almost in the back of my mind, a deal breaker. So I, man, when I, when I get, really get involved with this young lady, I have these other parties that's very involved with the mm-hmm. family mm-hmm. that has a lot of influence and on what's her yes it was so that part was kind of hmm so, because is she making a decision with me or is she making yeah. a decision with the whole family yes. right okay yes. so it's like it's just one dollar yeah. or ten dollars <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. 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 but you know it, you know just over time I, I grew to love everyone and i think we started talking more about what i expected and what she expected mm-hmm. and we kind of you know happy medium so now going forward y'all have a business and yes. working together and so forth yes. and before y'all had uh before you decided to go into the business working together because not many couples even friends yes. dating whatever don't get in business because there's all these rules yes i'm not the one believer in these rules that you know can't date a uh, job all these other things it just depends on the two individuals if you can work it out before y'all decided to go into the business okay what agreements what guidelines what contract whatever that y'all said we got to do before or we have to have an understanding <laughs> before we start doing A, B, C, D. I don't know if you really... I don't know. <laughs> we said it because we have worked together for so long, so yeah. I kind of said, man, I was always thinking in the back of my mind, I would love to partner with her just because I knew her work ethic was hard. She was aggressive at times. But it was, but y'all, were, y'all started off as Friends, friends mm-hmm. business partners, just associates, friends. She passed you off, yeah. took you back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Say, okay, I might as well just keep you. And then now you're working, yeah. and then now you get married. But now yeah. you're starting a business. You, you have to start other okay. businesses yeah. Yeah. differently yeah. than okay. what you go for. So I know, okay, boundaries and rules and things that we have. Yeah. Because, you know, y'all are naturally naive or, or choose to be sometimes. <laughs> What we had to do is I had to set boundaries because people would call 10, 10.30 or text 11 o'clock at night. They either had a business question or some issue or they had some life crisis. And it's like, okay, well, that's great that they, I mean, that's what I loved about, love about him is that anyone, you know, can talk to him. But there had to be boundaries. Like whatever issue True. they have, you can't fix at ten thirty at night. True. And it, you know, try, um, people, try telling them that. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, no, I, I know. If yeah. you needed me to get on the phone, <laughs> I would. Oh, but would. it had to be because he was like business, business, yeah. business. Like, and that's how he was used to being when he was single. Like yeah. I could do business at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. But I was like, no. Like at a certain point, it has to be our time. And then we just kind of implemented some rules as far as dealing with people of the opposite sex. Like, I was not, you know, you have to be very conscious of how you dress, even your body language when women are interacting. And I understood by the nature of our business, he was going to have to take a call from a lady. He may have to, you know, go help a lady in business. The same thing with me when it comes to a man. But he, you know, was, (coughs) it was never like, I didn't want him there. Uh, We always kind of made sure if I had to go someplace and there were, going to be men there I had someone else with me mm-hmm. you know we made sure we checked you know we checked in with each other we had communication but also just the a lot of that people you know I'm a hugger he's a hugger 
kind of that body language yeah. where people of the opposite sex had to change. Because he's a he's a tall, attractive, dark skinned, <clears throat> wonderful yes. African man that yes. got his business and everything mm-hmm. together. That's attractive to a lot of men. Yes, and his wife will cut somebody <laughs> down to the white meat. Yes. I know that. <laughs> no, and I know that. <laughs> And, and oh, we had man. a couple of situations where somebody was like, oh, that let you me actually just had to cut. cut. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, almost cut. Almost, and I had to say, yeah. let me help you. Let me tell you, anytime, and ladies will vouch, when women are playing with their hair, and I can, because I'm a woman, I know a woman's body yeah. language. And always know. <laughs> always know. Here's DC. Oh, yeah. Oh, 756. Fairmont Street, Northwest D.C. Oh, oh, keep it a real okay, you know what? Yeah. You know, okay, let's, 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 I didn't live in Montgomery you, you, County. You were, so. Okay, yeah. Yeah. but you, you in Southeast D.C. Yeah. yeah, no, I lived on Minnesota Avenue in Southeast. Uh-huh. Let's just keep it real, okay? <laughs> so I haven't been in Southeast. I haven't been in Northwest. Okay. Always know that I trust him. I have 100% trust in him, but I can watch a woman's body language. And if her language even begins to seem like it's suggestive, oh, you're going to meet me. You're going to be talking to both of them. Now, I'm, now, I'm all, Hi, just boo. So you know, just so you know, I'm always going to be a lady because I'm never going to be professional. I'm never going to disrespect yeah. myself or him. But or his kids. body actions and code words yeah. and everything else yeah. is just a stare like, Same way, vice versa. But you ain't going to see it. Yeah. yeah. And everything, you know, most men is not going to see it. You're going to be like, you don't do that with my wife. But, but <laughs> yeah. If a man, I'm sure he can read. Yeah. And we we have no. real candid, like yeah. barbershop talk yeah. Oh, yeah. We do. all the time. And so pillow there are talk. things, well, pillow talk. But yeah. barbershop talk is yeah. different. Yeah. You know, y'all yeah. are, wrong. Y'all are wrong. I'm sorry. Wrong. To, okay, let's just keep it real. The women talk is worse than barbershop talk. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, we're very yeah. honest and yeah. open with yeah. each other. And yeah. so a lot of things, yeah. like, you know, he'll say when a man does this, and we talk about that, yeah. like, with some of our other friends, and we can look at a situation, he'll yeah. say, when she does that, watch what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, in fact, yeah, we've yeah. actually had a request from a friend of ours yes. for us to do. We do a lot of events for couples, um, couples date nights. But we've had a request from a friend of ours to do an event for singles. And initially I was like, no, that's not really our target market because I haven't had a whole bunch of dating woes, you know, and yeah. whatever. But um, it is something we are considering doing. And yeah. I've, you know, got a couple couples that I've, or, and, and it's, I want people who are seriously single. Yeah. Now, let's go on forward today. Y'all have a business. Y'all yes. have several of them. Yes. Mm-hmm. But uh, you have uh, the business uh, going on and dealing with talking a bit about people's uh, relationship in terms mm-hmm. of love mm-hmm. and business. Love Tell and us the name about it and what it's about. Well, it's called um, Love and Biz, the Balance Act, Mm -hmm. balancing your faith, your family, your finances, and your fitness. Because that's all a part of life, and it's really important. And sometimes it can be a challenge to balance all that stuff in there. Like, okay, I'm running my business, but how do I have time to spend with my family? And I can't go to church, and I don't get to go to the gym. So we do a lot of events where that are, you know, sitting around those different areas. And we encourage, you know, we do a date night, um, a couple's date night where we've done paint night. Um, we've done salsa and kisumba lessons, dancing lessons, but everything that we do in those events, there's always a message of inspiration, not like a curriculum, but something of inspiration for couples. Like with painting, you start off with two blank canvases, he's going to paint his differently than I paint mine, but when you put it together, it makes a beautiful picture, and I have to accept that he may paint outside the lines, you know, but when you put it together, it's beautiful, even with the dancing. Um, with Kisumba and a lot of Latin style dancing, I'm a very strong, surprisingly, woman. But I have to learn to <laughs> submit myself to him in the dancing and let him lead me. And for a lot of women who come from like sort of my background, that can be challenging. So if he can't lead you in dancing, how is he able to lead you in a relationship? Or if you're learning to take the back off to work on it. Right. And for you, sir, how has this developed in terms of this business going forward? Um, and especially you coming from a, you know, we're both IT men. Sure. And yes. Yes. So it is a field that unfortunately is lacking a lot of women, yes. and, and especially yes. minority women. Sure. So how is this coming out to the business and developing up in terms of love and business for you? Well, you know, um, <laughs> it's, it's pretty interesting because just being in the IT world, like you said, you know, we're kind of, off in a corner a lot of times, off just doing our own thing. Now we're doing love and business. We're forcing couples to, to come together. And the beauty of it is that, you know, we've had some, some tremendous testimonies already mm-hmm. where couples have said, man, 
I'm so glad to get we, we connect with you guys because now we got a good couple that we can trust. Great couples that we can hang around. That we don't have to worry about our husbands doing whatever or wives doing whatever. We just just a good foundation because so many people need to have that me time, alone time, couples time. Because like my wife said, the rat race is going to continue. Mm -hmm. But while well, you're going to take time to spend to do what you used to do, how you attract this young woman, mm -hmm. because. Two, three, four, five years and go by. You look, look up. You don't know who this person is sitting mm -hmm. beside you. So, from a love and business standpoint, it's really helped our relationship because we're we're part of love and business. We're part of this this struggle because we do have a busy life. So, this date night, couples night, is for us it's too. Right for us, yeah, it is. Because it, it allows you to see more. See, the thing is, you're willing to communicate yes. and love each other for those different things. So, it's yes. no surprise. It's fifteen. 20 years down the line, I don't like what you do. Exactly. You do it just ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. And so, so when you, how has the transformation, and you've been doing this for a while now, yes. how has the transformation you see in terms of the growth of the individual from being a flat character to being a round individual? As far as the couples. Yeah, that the couples that's out there um, in the continuing working mentorship, talking discussions. Well, we, just like he said, we've connected with, because not everybody that's married is in a good marriage. Mm -hmm. that's right, right. You know, um, that's right. not everybody who's married has a relationship with their spouse. So we've been able to to be around a lot of other couples that are focused and serious about being married and just they're so appreciative of this time to be able to come in a safe environment. We're very particular about who we work with. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the, the young lady and her fiancé that do our dance lessons, they're getting married next month in sure. December. Yes. Their whole curriculum is around staying connected yes. with your spouse. So we've, you know, seen couples that have had that chance to kind of come together and, and really just be with their spouse and understand that when you're dancing, you and your partner should never separate. Right. Mm -hmm. You should always be touching because when, when you disconnect and you're not touching, now someone can come in between. So, you know, we've seen couples kind of grow that way. We do marriage. We're also certified marriage mentors. Yes. So we have worked with couples in, in mentoring sessions, not, you know, counseling, but where they've come back and said, man, it was so helpful when you yes. did that. We might have walked out of there mad at each other, but we thought about what you kind of talked about. Yes. And it's been able, you know, to help people grow. And, you know, one of the couples, you know, they are now going through premarital counseling to get married. Um, so it's been helpful. It, we just fell into it by default, yes. by being in business together. And then we were married. We saw a lot of our business partners that were having issues with relationships and balancing all this stuff. And they were coming to us for advice. And we were like, look, everybody call. We might as well monetize yes. it. Yes. You know, it's, it's, yes. it's a business. Now, let me. I got three directions I'm going to go through. One, the power couple, empire, and situations that people go through. And I'm going to work from last to first. In a lot of situations... Um, those who are successful financially or uh, entrepreneurs, she wants A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mm -hmm. You, lawyer, still a lawyer, mm -hmm. you uh, already children, and then you <clears throat> want to spend more time and try to be there for those girls. I, but I still want this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But I want, but I want you home. Mm -hmm. Okay, but still. He understands, like, to get this lifestyle, I got to put in more work. Mm -hmm. I got to take a new business. I got to mm -hmm. get, get another car. You still want the lifestyle, but now, example, together we may have been earning 130 grand a year. Mm -hmm. Now, you at home may do a few things here and there, but your income may be $5,000 a year instead of the 80 and 90 that you were bringing in mm -hmm. plus mine. Mm -hmm. But we still want to live that extra amount of money. So you still want, you feel as his job as a husband to give me what I want, but then I gotta work more time, do more things, double if not triple my load. Mm -hmm. But then you still want him home. That's not even my mindset. No, no I'm not yeah. saying you're. I'm no, just saying, but any what is woman that? that kind of has that mindset is unrealistic and selfish. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm gonna say this, and I don't care if someone disagrees with me or not. If you want that lifestyle, you get out there, you contribute. Like a marriage is a hundred, a hundred. It's not that he does 75% and she does 25. If you're in a situation where you want to be home with your kids, then you need to adjust your lifestyle. You know, we've had challenges. We're not trying to sit here and say, you know, we're living on the Gold Coast. But there were things that there are so many things that you can do to adjust your lifestyle. Because what is it about? Are you living for the material things or the quality time? 
because there are a lot of people you see that even have less than us, but they have such full lives, you know, they can do more with little. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for a woman that kind of has that kind of mindset, I want you here with me, but I want to live a certain lifestyle, then you need to get up off your behind and go get a job. There are things you can do working from home to earn that money. So I think it's unfair for any woman to kind of say, well, I just want to have you know, get your head out the sand. Mm, got you. Now, sir, what are some of the things uh, and from your side of the perspective and then as being a single man, single father for a while, and now a into a blended relationship, a nuclear family, what are some of the things that you see for other men, single or married, or making some mistakes that you want to get out there? Charles, mistakes? Oh, man. You know, uh, communication. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm really big on communication. Um, and then this goes back to our blended family classes that we do. You know, there are, there are times where, you know, when you have, did you mention blended family, different parties involved, such as you have your step parents, you have your biologicals. If you're not communicating all on the same plane, mm -hmm. you know, those kids are going to suffer. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've learned, and there's a lot of men, I do, or, or men, I call men, men making mistakes where they say, this is my child, this is, I'm going to run things over, do, do my way. And as a man, I'm the first one. I'm willing to reach out. Like a, you, um, you and I had a, a, a mutual child out there somewhere. I would be the one, the first to, to extend my olive branch and say, "Hey, let's talk. Mm -hmm. Let's go somewhere, have some coffee. Let's talk about how we're going to help raise Work this child that together." Situation out. You know, yeah. let's just this. It's all about the child, not about you and I. Our personal. Let's set that aside. Let's just benefit the child. The leadership aspect of that that irritates me. Yeah. Uh, that, and, and no, no offense to you and women sure. out there, mm -hmm. but as a leadership, as a gentleman, for me, my irritation is that family court should never even hardly happen except for there's no yes. parents involved or um, you know so, some legal with some money or something totally. like that. Where, you know the child may be famous. Other than that, that should be one of the most emptiest courts in the world, instead totally. of the most busiest. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like this: uh, if even if the relationship don't work out. Mm -hmm. Okay, with a child and a child develops, just work it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you in, in today's world, most men don't have jobs, mm -hmm. or they don't have it. They, women may not earn as much, but sure. they may have the jobs. Sure. So we fall into a conflict of what we think of tradition, mm -hmm. especially in the African American families. And then now you have a situation where, you know, oh, I still want child support, I still want this, I yeah. still want that, but you're living <clears throat> high on a home. Do you actually need $10,000 a month? Yeah. Do you actually need a thousand dollars a month when you know he's struggling? Yeah. It's not like he's not trying to. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Or vice versa. The women there's a lot of women that have to pay child support now too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And she may be struggling. Why do I have to have somebody legislate proper behavior and yeah. common sense? Yeah. yeah. And we and we've been we've through been that. Through, yeah. Um. And and I'm kind of the same way. You know. Why do we have to let two lawyers who it's their job to make money? Yes. Um, so you're losing the double. So you, so you will have to pay them, and you want to pay me, or I'm gonna have to pay you, or whatever. And then you have a judge that, and if they're not having a good day, or don't yes. like your lawyer, That's right. you know they're gonna rule something. So I, we we have definitely said that the blessing is that um, you know he oftentimes is the mediator between my yes. ex-husband and I. Mm -hmm. So you know he'll step in, and um, because what we have progressed, it's been a journey. Is that it's ultimately about the kids. Right. Look, you don't like me, I don't like you. Okay, fine. That's why we're not together but we both love our child. And so it's important for us. You know, I, I feel like this, and I've always said this. When the relationship is over, now we have a business relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this. There are people that may not like, and I hate to say it, Donald Trump as a person, but they'll sit down and they'll do business with him. Because it can be at, and I'm only talking about him in terms because of the context of negotiating. Yeah. Yeah, because they, nothing look, outside they look at it because, because it can be advantageous for them from yeah. a business, business perspective. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have to like you necessarily to do business with you if I've got a good lawyer. Correct. You know, good lawyering, and there are some good lawyers out there, because the right lawyer <laughs> or two people that are kind of on the same mindset, like we can agree to disagree, yeah, we can sit down and we can do some business that's going to work for both of us. But we're not going to hang out together. Yeah. I'm not going to call and talk to you. No, see, it, 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 for example, if I have a, a ex-wife and children and another mm -hmm. man and a family, I'm going to be the most friendly. It's not because I'm threatening because yeah. you're about an ex-woman. Yeah. Like, look, man, look, what can we do? Yeah. Yeah. And, or the daddy day yeah. I say, I'm, and, and I'm not going to say this as, you know, subjecting myself as a lower standard of a man. Sure. I want to invite you just as my right. to go dance with my daughter because right. you're involved in, sure. like, 
I may miss some things, you may miss some things. Yeah. If, if, if the truth be told, something happened to your car. Yeah. And thing. Now granted, she's your wife now, sure. but I'll be highly offended yeah. as a, the father. And it may not be nothing to do with my child, sure. but I'll be offended if you can't come to me as a man and say, look, bro, I broke down, could you help me out? That, 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 yeah. And that's just like yeah. you should uh, come yeah. to me because at the end of the day, you need to get to work and get to going because you're trying to help keep the house, keep the mother of my child straight and my child. Yeah. If yeah. that's the situation, yeah. where is the understanding and the patience of men? Yeah. Get our pride and yeah. our privy yeah. member. That's, that's a whole other radio. That's get, a whole get, other show. Get our pride yeah. and our privy yeah. member yeah. out the way. Yeah. You just said yeah. pride. Is Prior to yeah. Yes, I said preview member, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to, yeah. you know, my ex-husband's wife yeah. and I were cordial and cool at first, and then we had a little situation, And but what I realized is that my kids are with you for about three months out of the year when they go out there for the summer. Mm -hmm. I need to not have you totally hating me because I don't want you to take it out on my kids, you know. Yeah. I don't, you know, so I have to get along with you. I have to respect you, be respectful. I don't have to necessarily like you, but I can respect you because you're going to be taking care of my kids. And then, you know, my thing was I wanted my ex-husband happy with his new wife because I want my kids when they come out there to be in mm -hmm. a, I want them to place. feel like, oh, we just transitioned from one safe place to another. another. So we know what's yeah. going on. Yeah, if he is miserable and they're miserable and not getting along and she's insecure and feeling like she's being emotionally or physically abused, I don't want my kids around that. Is that and then on top of all that, I want it safe because something happens to you that now I got to deal with the missing father of mine. Yeah. And, and, and that means a lot. So now, how do you, and going forward, y'all have now an empire. Okay, you have the. Oh, uh, we ain't talking about the TV show here. Okay. We're talking about the good empire. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Right. You know, um, not developed by Fox, but uh, <laughs> we have. You know, you have the uh, business, you have the IT, you have the legal, you have all these other different things, and also you extended that onto a book. Yeah. Tell us about it. Well, we have a book that we co-authored with a fellow UVA yes. grad called Voices of Inspiration, and it's uh, about 20-something other authors from around the world. Um, and so we co-authored that. It's an Amazon bestseller. But we are actually currently now working on a book about being, on just, just our book, about being a blended family. Because there's so being a blended family, my girlfriend called it, is like a sandwich. And there's so many different layers. So we are currently working on a book about being a blended family. Family. Now, let me ask this a sidebar to question. How does that blended family work when it comes to different cultures and relationships and, and the cultures and especially, with, you know, for, in my view, everybody's blended by now, no matter what you say. So, you know, DNA and, you know, stuff for bone marrow is a pain in the butt. So mm -hmm. how do you deal with that emotionally and culturally considering the fact that we may have the same growing up beginnings, but your truth is different because we're in technically South versus some of us who grew up up north versus mm -hmm. someone who's black from uh, African American or Native American from the other side of the country, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. background, how does that work? Well, we have to actually have a couple that we currently have in our, one of our mm -hmm. classes that she's Indian. She's Indian, Indian from Indian, India. She's black. And the culture is obviously night and day. Mm -hmm. So it was very challenging because, you know, with the Indian culture, you typically marry within the Indian culture. Mm -hmm. So when I asked the question myself, I said, I asked him, I said, how was that when you went back to finally meet their parents? And he said it was a total disaster. The dad was totally against it. So, you know, but they worked through it. They still mm -hmm. together. Well, I worked. Yeah, I mean, because you still, you still do, because I tell people all the time, which they, they, a lot of people are not aware, the cultural uh, skin color is, is worse than within in our community, yeah. dealing with um, and, um, Asian Indian cultures and a whole bunch of other different cultures besides the black community. Yeah. So it's a very strict, and also you have an uh, um, element of that's those, for lack of a better word, been westernized or Americanized. Yeah. A lot of the women are stere sometimes stereotypically, I'm gonna do, end up being with the husband. Yeah. But here, they've come here, some who have been um, uh, Americanized with the culture here, I'm a strong woman, I'm gonna do what I No, you don't got to do anything with me. There was the old Eddie Matter if he joke, you know, I'm gonna woman for you. Don't let her talk to your American yeah. friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, she's gonna be you know, she cooked, clean, did everything you want until she got with her girlfriend yeah. now she, yeah. she did tripping. How does that work? In terms of being a blended family? Yeah. 
I just think it's important yeah. um, that you communicate yes. and you respect yeah. each other's cultures. The particular couple that he's talking about, um, I guess in Indian culture, they don't eat pork or something, yes. you know, mm -hmm. with pigs. They don't eat pork. So you've got to talk. What you have to realize is, you know, um, we have a t-shirt called It's Us Against the World. And that's how your mindset has to be when you're in a relationship. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it's a team. It is you against everybody sure. else, you know. And um, you, 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 that's why, again, it's important to have these date nights because you don't want, you shouldn't have to worry about your wife going around your friend's mm -hmm. wives. Sure. Like, if that's something you have to worry about, then it's kind of like, well, let's look at your friends and their relationship. And you that's probably, check your cell phones. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah you know. Um, but you should also have a strong enough relationship that she's not going to be adversely influenced by if your friend's wife is doing something. Now, you can't control other people's relationships, and they are what they are, and you don't stop becoming their friend. But that's why it's important to find outlets, like when we do our date night, where you yeah. have other couples there that are like, look, I'm in love with my husband, you know, I'm in love with my wife, yes. and we're just here to have a good time and to be around other yes. positive married couples in a safe place. The last direction is y'all have a wonderful shirt that says power couple. Yes. Well, you know, a common term, but less often uh, mm -hmm. accurately applied. Mm -hmm. How does that apply to you two? Well, I, I feel as though the power couple, and like, like she said, we've always, people have always said, man, you know, we would love to be like you guys, or what do you guys have? I mean, how do you stay so happy? And, you know, so we, we go back and we, we practice what we preach. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, the term power couple is we don't take it lightly. Mm -hmm. We are a powerful couple in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, we're together. As you said, we're a team. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is no no I in and team. team, and team. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we go around, whatever we do, uh, we, we got to the point where I could start to speak, she could finish my sentence, mm -hmm. and vice versa. So and again, like I said, we, we make sure we always representing us on a professional level. We're never going to embarrass ourselves or embarrass the other, I mean, probably including our kids. So we're always representing, you know, the, the, this, this powerful unit or powerful thing, if it will be. So you want to yeah, and so power couple, you know, people think of power couples, you think of Jay-Z and mm -hmm. Beyonce, you think of, you know, a lot of these, you know, it, it was Russell Simmons and Kimora, or, um, you know, it's not about money and it's not about sure. fame. It's about building a foundation. It's about a relationship. It's about being able to communicate, talk with each other, work together, set a good godly or a good example yeah. for other couples right. it's about your influence and so that's very powerful when people can look at us and say man you all give me hope yeah. or I want to I want to have a marriage or a relationship with my spouse that's like you all that is powerful so it's not about how much money we have in the bank account it's about how we represent our institution of marriage and, and just the sanctity of our relationship I understand I understand so how can they get a power couple t-shirt from you and how much is it it's, they, it's, all right. it's $30. So it's thirty five ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> I got to my cut in there. Sorry. Right. Other than $30. This there. is an affiliate marketing program. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get an affiliate program, please got that. Yeah. Uh, so it's $30. Is that two shirts? Oh. No, per shirt. Okay. Per shirt. And they can actually go to our site. Um, our, our website is balanceloveandbusiness.com balanceloveandbusiness.com Spell correctly. Yes, and yeah. they can go to the site and they can pick the t-shirt um, style, uh, the color and everything and, and design their own shirts. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've got other shirts on there. We have a shirt that pays uh, you know homage to vets called Hug a Vet. Uh, Lester did say he's a... I'm a retired veteran, sorry. 23 plus years with Branch Air Force. Congratulations, thank sir. You, thank yeah, you. yeah. So our, our shirts say Hug a Vet, Our Lives yeah. Matter. We also have a shirt for the women, you know, the fitness part called Slay, Slay Fitness. fitness. Yep. Um, then we have our Us Against the World. And then we also have a t-shirt that says Worth the Wait. Yes. And, you know, that's not just for children in terms of abstinence, but even for women. Mm -hmm. And even for men, if you're single, you got to realize you're worth, worth the, the wait. wait. Like, don't rush into something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they can go there and pick their t-shirt size and color. Okay. Now, before we go, I got some questions. I said I, I, I always like to do one and just give people a hard time. So, mm -hmm. so you have to forgive me. Uh, Android or Apple? Android. Android. Okay, good. Got <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Favorite movie that y'all watch together? Purple Rain. 
<laughs> Should I do this a question and answer on the next cards and then ask y'all to compare? Color purple. Uh, color, color purple and purple rain. Okay, so <laughs> we're, we're taking both yeah. of them. Okay, so and I'm assuming your favorite color is purple. No, actually, our favorite color is blue. My yeah. favorite color is blue. Yeah. To match okay. our favorite yeah. football team, yeah. go Cowboys. Cowboys oh, all day long. Yeah, yeah. That's how I knew I could marry him. His favorite movie First was place. The Color Purple yeah. when he liked the Dallas Cowboys. I really didn't Oh, know see, else. I'm a Giants and Jazz fan. So oh, we're sorry. sorry. I, hope y'all win. I hope y'all win this weekend. Get it no hey, you know, it's like, <laughs> luckily y'all got a quarterback finally. You know, get yeah. but uh, I'll give you that. Um, favorite city? Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. And not just because of the football not, team. Yeah. It's, the, well, it's, it's the environment. It was yeah. just nice. The area, the, yeah. the real estate, all oh, that was so good. When we grow up, that's where we that's want, where to want to go. go. Besides the Bible, favorite book? And not the one you're already. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you the, the, the best book that I mm-hmm. have ever read that just. It's called Redeeming Love. It's a Christian fiction book by Francine Rivers. And it's based upon the book of Hosea, the story of Hosea in the Bible, and just how um, God can take the most ratchet and worst of individuals and turn them around and make them lovable. And how, you know, he really tells us that sometimes you have to love hard. Um, Redeeming Love, I want to make the movie. it's you best. can star in it, right? Yeah. No, I want to star in it. Oh, I want to direct. On, no, no, because no, the lady in there, you know, the, the book, the book of Hosea, the woman was a prostitute, and that's not really the character that I want to play. No, but but you're trying to, you don't have to do the prostitute scene, but you can also, but you're trying to show the redeeming quality of, like you said, of Hosea and the life over. Yeah, that you can have. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'll be behind the camera doing that, but in that and probably um, think and grow rich. Okay. Um, mine was more of a business one too. Um, I'm more of a late reader, per se. I didn't read as much as I really wanted to. But now I'm worried more of business stuff. So mine is probably go for no. Mm-hmm. Um, because in business, you know, it's hard out here. You know, you got to be able to go for a lot of no's and look for the one yes. So that one yes can turn your whole life around. If you weren't doing, you started in IT, you started out in law. If you weren't doing those two careers, what were, what's another career that you would have started off? But we're, I'd want to be a firefighter. That was like my dream career. But I think what we're doing now, we're speakers, we're yeah, authors. Yeah. And I think spe- really speaking is probably my second choice. Yeah. It wasn't IT. Favorite TV show that you watched uh, that she's not with you, but he or she is not with you? Not with me. <laughs> oh, oh, some sports. Oh, yeah, it'd be, yeah, it'd be. No, I'm actually, National Geographic. What about you? Probably like HGTV or one of the cooking shows. Okay. The ability of fixing a house or something. Yeah, yeah I mean, we both good. like that, but yeah. probably like the Food Network, Food TV. What's the show that y'all watch together? Ooh. Empire. Empire. <laughs> our our yeah, guilty pleasures bad. are Empire, bad. Basketball yeah, Wives, yeah, yeah, and like Love yeah. Hip Hop. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Okay. I, I'm going to let y'all slide. Yeah, 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 yeah we know. Yeah, we know. Uh, what's the best meal he ever cooked for you? Mm. You really yeah, no, he's the best meal he has cooked for me. Okay. I'm good at what I do. <laughs> well, I know there have been a few in our time together, but the most recent is he made some tuna fish that was um, really good. He's struggling for that one. Yeah, he, did. he made some tuna fish because I had made some and like nobody would eat it. But he made some tuna fish a while back that was really good. What's the favorite meal that she, you cooked that she cooked? Pork chops. Definitely, yeah. I love pork chops. You know, I go and do just pork chops, lasagna, spot on. All right. If you <laughs> if you mentioned guilty pleasure, what's a what's a guilty pleasure or habit that you're trying to stop doing? Guilty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you go first. <laughs> For both of us, or like him, both. or probably both. eating like at oh, night. Yeah, eating ice cream at not supposed to eating ice cream and popcorn 12 o'clock 12 o'clock because we stay up late mm-hmm. like that's definitely yeah who um someone who would you get to talk to besides a family member if somebody else who you would like to uh that's not here with us today but you would like the opportunity to speak to someone that has passed away mm-hmm. my grandmother for sure mm, i have often wondered i think i would have loved to have talked 
Nelson Mandela. I, I had a bucket list of people that I wanted to meet or see, and it was Nelson Mandela, Oprah Winfrey, and Maya Angelou. And I've been blessed to be able to see all three and to hear them speak, but I really would have loved to have spoken to him and just talked to him. And just, he's such a quiet strength. Final question, what's, what's on track for 2017? 2017, we, we plan to be speaking with the Essence, the Essence Festival. Our goal is the Essence Festival and Steve Harvey, Steve the Harvey name of the and T.D. Jake's TV show. Yes. I thought um, it was our show. That well, you no, we're already here. Yeah, you know, yeah, we're we're here. Here. And the ultimate goal was to be here. Yeah, no, for next year. Yeah. We can yeah. go back next year. Yeah. Um, but probably, and Oprah. And yeah. Oprah, yeah. But, um, she ain't doing the show, no worry. Well, no, probably no, just no. To, to take our no message no of... Um, just being a blended family and just all the things, you know, how God can really use you to a larger audience. And, um, and talking yeah. about the struggles yeah. that we've overcome, um, that that would be our goal is to have a large... And then our book will be out yes. um, next year, the beginning of next year. Not a problem. I want to say personally, on behalf of Enliven Radio Legacy, Net Radio, Chambala Studios, and all the different networks that we work with, thank you so very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I appreciate it. Uh, so much for all the different things we've, we've been through and, and you being the man to strong man that you are. I appreciate the both of you. Thank you. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you and get in contact with you again. Okay. Again, you can follow us on our Facebook pages. We have Lester, Moni Garrett. We also have a Lester and Moni Garrett Facebook business page. You can also follow us on that website, which is balanceloveandbusiness.com. I thank you very kindly. Check us out for more great things coming from Alive and Radio and Travala Studios. I'm the one and only Mr. LP, Stephen Sykes. Everybody be good to each other. Behave. Try to, at least. Make sure you're out there vote and stay involved in your community. Have a blessed one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.